In this video, Ryan's going to be drawing Lobo from Imagination. This is part one of a two-part series. In this one, he's going to be sketching Lobo and Graphite, and in part two, he'll be inking. So you guys see my, my tools. I'm just laying stuff out. I have a million of, a million pencils that are about this small and smaller. If you guys see these tiny pencils, because I'm constantly going through pencils over and over and over. Um, I use 2B. That's what I use. Yeah, that's I'm just used to it. Um, I like it because you don't have to sharpen that that often and it's dark enough where you can still pick up um you know some nice rich darknesses and, and it doesn't smudge that's one of the, that's one of the really cool things it, it i mean it smudges but it doesn't smudge as much as like anything darkening it any f pencils or any uh four four b's or you know five b's the reason why i i use b's right is h's are more on the technical side and the b's because they're softer you can kind of manipulate a little bit more. I use a red pe pencil. Okay, this this does this, this does all my thinking for me. So after I'm done with this, I don't have to think, it's just go. I can literally just start inking once I lay it out with the red. Um, and the, the reason why I don't, I don't do it with pencil, you know, it gets all smudgy and stuff like that. And I, I, sometimes I don't like the smudge. So it depends on the art. It's a strategy that I've used and I've developed this so you a while back. It's like a shortcut. So I use the pencil to lay down the key points and then I just, and then from it, just go. Because at the end of the day, when I'm done inking and, and you see everything, it, it it still has, you can still see the layouts. You can see the, the finishes and the layouts at the same time. I have a couple of ways of how I pencil. I kind of have the, the red, it might be hard for you guys to see, the red but the red the, it it gives me a, a template okay so now i can literally just go in straight with inks if i wanted to but i don't want to i want to be able to show the process and i want to break it down a little bit so i can literally go in and just create a bunch of like dark areas like this and then i'm pretty much 70 percent 60 70 percent through with this at this point because i'm not thinking I'm, I'm trying to eliminate the thinking part. I'm trying to feel it more. Now I know, oh, I need a dark area somewhere around here, which is going to help, you know, identify his chest, you know, and then I need another dark area down here, but maybe with some streaks like this is going to help identify the wrinkles in his clothes or something like that. So I'm using these darks. My, this might be hard for you guys to see, but I'm using these darks right here to kind of establish a really quick template and then I just quickly go in just like this this fast and just quickly lay out what I'm gonna where I'm gonna draw certain things and now I as you start as I'm building it you start to see it it's still in the rough stages it's not clean at all it's to give anchors I want them to kind of feel it just I wanted to put in, in interject themselves into this rather than just trace my, my, my line. So I'm giving them a roadmap and then I'm letting the inker just go. The reason I started working in this format is for speed. Um, so when I draw like this, I can finish a page in like an hour and a half, two hours. The inking part, like say if I'm going to ink it, it'll, it'll take a little bit longer. It could make like a whole page with, you know, four or five, six panels. Then, then I'll, that's where I slow down a little bit more because I'm adding the detail. Like I'll take this energy that, that I just created right here and I'll add more details. In. My thing is energy, energy and direction. Um, so I'm shooting for. I'm just giving, I'm just throwing out, once I locked everything down in, in space and people know, okay, this is where the character's gonna be, this is where he's gonna sit on the space. From here, it's, okay, where where are the major parts of the human body, you know? Um, and then once you figure that part out, you're like, okay, now you see what the major parts are. Um, um, now, how do you light that? And I then I light that with energy also. I don't have to go in and draw every single hatch mark but if I'm rendering in a specific direction, it gives an impression of these hatch marks. And then the inker decides, oh, should I make that solid black or can I go in? And it gives the inker a little bit more room to breathe. Did you have anyone in your studio that you looked up to? Yeah, I remember um, Jim was drawing, he was designing a character. I can't remember which one. It was around a time when he was still drawing walk, walk ads and 
he was designing a character. He was, as he was designing, he was gonna show me strategy on how do you draw this. And he just put the pencil down and just started drawing. It wasn't even a pencil, it was a Sharpie. He put a Sharpie down, started drawing, and I'm, I'm like, oh, he's not making any mistakes. And I'm like, what the hell? How oh, is this guy so good? It was, it, that was one of the things that really blew my mind, I remember. Oh, uh, man. Well, I I first saw his work when when he did X-Men. I didn't see it before before that. That was the one that really blew, blew my mind. I'm, that was the one that made me decide, okay, I want to draw comics. I knew I could draw, but I did, no, did not know I wanted to draw comics until I saw that X-Men number one. And I'm like, okay, this is it. This is, I think I figured it out. How do you deal with making mistakes and planning ahead for the inker? This is why I draw loose is when I, if I make a mistake, um, it's, it's easier to fix. Um, then if I, if I'm locking it in, like if I went perfectly detailed, I had all these details in the arms and everything and all that stuff, then, and I made a mistake, you know, as, as I'm drawing the background, I realized, oh, that arm is off. You know, then I have to go back and erase it. It would eat me in my brain a little bit more like, ah, oh, man, I got to erase this thing. I just spent, you know, 30 minutes on. So I try to spend a short amount of time on it and just capture the energy first. And then, um, you know, it makes it easier for me. But if, but correcting it, um, if, if I have to correct, it's not that, that big of a deal. I just basically just keep everything fast, just like this. Keep everything fast. I'm drawing the wrinkles, but I'm throwing these lines that represent that the wrinkles. That way, I'm not locking it in place. I'm only giving an impression of it. So now, when I actually go in with to ink, because I'm going to ink using this ink brush right here, um, it, it's easier for me. I can make all my corrections here in this stage when I'm inking. His butt was a little bit too big. See that? I, I saw his butt was coming out a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna fix it immediately. I, you know, um, this is some, something else I do. Um, I actually teach this to my students too, is to take a break. Um, so as I'm drawing, um, I try to give my brain a little bit of break. You know, just, just rest a little bit. Like I'll draw, I'll finish it up, and then I'll put it away completely put it away look at some i'll go look at something else i'll play some video games in my old age i still play video games but yeah so i'll play some games i'll go for a walk i'll do whatever then i'll come back to it and, I, and when i see it bam I'm, I'm gonna instantly see my mistakes and then i'll know ah that chin is off the fingers off is off you know the back is off you know i don't like those wrinkles it's too dark in this area or i need to brighten this up or it's whatever it is do you have any tips for character design while you're drawing this is the thing that i also teach is that you have to become your character you know um you have to pretty much act it out in your head what would this character do this is lobo what would lobo do how would he pose how would he how would he, he he position his body when he's attacking Superman? You know, you have to think like that. And then you act it out on the page as you're drawing. I think I'm gonna bring this leg down here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make this entire leg black. Push it in the background. I'm gonna bring this foot over here. So we give him like the tip the standard boots see this is let me show you, show you guys why i don't lay out and pencil with my pencils okay because if you can see what's happening here right is i'm laying out this foot and you see all these scribbles these lines and i have to go back and erase it clean it up if i do all the scribbles with my red i don't do any erasing as you can see where i do it up here i just go did Jim Lee critique you while you were at Wildstorm? If so, how did you feel about it? But he would call us into his office. He would call us into his office and he would say, he would just rip us apart, man. He would, oh my God. We would, we would leave his office. He did it to everyone. Everyone that came in the studio. So um, um, he would rip us apart and um, 
and and we would leave, go back to our desk, and just kind of throw our pencils down and say, okay, I don't feel like drawing right now. Are you guys ready to go to lunch? Let's, let's go to lunch. Let's go do something. And just did, I just didn't want to draw after getting ripped by, by Jim. But the cool thing about it, Jim never stopped. He, he would do it every once in a while, about once or twice a year, he would do it. He would just come in and just break you down and just say, stop drawing this way, draw that way. And then, you, you know, I really, really appreciated that because that helped me build, um, you know, the roots of who I am as a comic artist. You know, it, it literally reforged me and shook me to the core to make me rethink what am I doing wrong and how am I going to fix it? In part two, Ryan's going to ink this drawing and talk about his process, materials, and his career as a professional comic book artist. This was from David Finch's live stream on his channel. Go on over there to see the full thing. If you're interested in learning from Ryan, check out comicsperbootcamp.com. It's an in-person workshop that he hosts with Alex Sinclair, Will Sportaccio, and Carlos DeAnda. Also keep an eye out for some online lessons that he has in the works. If you liked this video, please press the like button and leave a comment. It really does help. And your support will let us make more content for this channel. For anyone that does like, comment, and subscribe, you'll be entered into a raffle to win a drawing from Ryan. 